You're listening to the Mastermind Parenting Podcast with Randy Rubenstein, episode 55. Well, hi, you guys. Welcome to the podcast this week. We have an interesting topic, and it's all about what is this new age of parenting? And like, what if it's not working? What if you're tempted to say, you know what, I gave it a shot. And the truth of it, like, it sounds great in theory, but it doesn't freaking work. And my kids aren't listening to me. They have no respect and they're not listening. They look at my face, they yell, no, no. So it feels like the clowns are running the circus and this is, you know, this is just not going to work. So if you find that, that, that reel is playing in your brain, or if your spouse is saying that, which that makes me crazy when my moms are putting in all this hard work and, you know, it takes a little time to learn a new way of parenting and to retrain your subconscious programming. Like, sorry, it takes a minute. And so when, and it's repetition, repetition, practice, repetition, repetition is what builds mastery. And before you know it, all the tools and the skills and the mastermind parenting pillars that I teach, it starts to come more naturally. At first, it might be I'm getting it right 2% of the time, and then it quickly grows to 30% of the time. That's what I really tell people is that when you start to notice that you're, you're able to remember the tools you want and, do, and handle things the way you want to handle it, even when you're in the heat of the moment, 30% of the time, you're going to notice a significant shift. And so that 30% will then grow to 50%. It's never going to be 100%, right? You're never going to have a week, or I shouldn't say never, but most likely you're going to have, you know, a week where it's, uh, even now for me, I would say on a weekly basis, I mean, now my kids, especially my younger two who have only been raised with this, they kind of will school me. And so if I, if I screw up, they're like, um, yeah, like my daughter said to me recently, she's like, so... I don't want your guidance here. I don't want your advice. As I said, she didn't say guidance. I don't want your advice. I just, you just need to listen. So stop talking. Like she, and I was like, you got it. Like that's empathy 101. Nobody wants to be fixed. You have to be invited to share your perspective. I know that it's ineffective. I teach, I created the productive conversation process and, and I still screw it up sometimes. And now, you know, I have them to be my Congress, my checks and balances and to keep me in check, but it's hard to get it even 90% of the time. So this is a constant evolution. So when I have my mom say, yeah, my, my spouse, my husband's just not buying in. He's like, yeah, it does is not working. It doesn't work. I haven't seen one thing. And, uh, that frustrates me because I'm like, yeah, it's really hard when only one person is learning the process and the other person is not buying in and undermining. So if you find yourself going to that place of, I gave it a shot, it made sense, but you know what? At the end of the day, it didn't work. I'm going to go back to the sticker charts and kids need a heavy dose of fear to make them do the right thing. And the new age stuff just doesn't work. Right. Uh, I get it. And this podcast episode is about addressing that. And I want to tell you, um, and I'm also going to diagnose what's most likely going on and what the missing link is, what the missing puzzle piece is, because it's actually just one tweak that I think is the case for when it's not working, when empathy doesn't seem to be working, when mastermind parenting doesn't seem to be working. It's because there's a missing key component. And I'm going to let you guys know what that is. So first, I was talking to a couple recently, this awesome couple, and they were fed up. They were like, we're sick of it. We're walking on eggshells around our eight-year-old daughter. And, you know, we've read all the things. We've read the whole brain child. We've read countless parenting books. We've even taken parenting classes that our county offers. Uh, I mean, we're talking about people that, were super advanced. I call them like graduate level people who are coming to me. So they, they 
I mean, one of them had a counseling degree. We're talking educators, meditators, techie people who study things and research things and don't just don't just take things lightly. Like really, really hardworking people who were like, oh, we have rolled up our sleeves and tried our hardest to figure this out, but nothing's working. They, they were like, we even took our strong-willed daughter to this awesome therapist. And at first I was like eight and going to a therapist, like was it a play therapist? What kind of therapist? And they're like, oh, she did this cool thing called EMDR, which I was like, okay, they're even into like cool progressive modalities. So I was like, okay, okay. And so they said, you know, we, we, we understand that she has a hard time regulating regulating her emotions. And so we took her to this therapist and used some of these cool alternative modalities to help her develop better school, better skills for self-regulation so that she could have, you know, she was able to manage her emotions in a more effective, productive way. So they knew all the things. That's what I'm basically saying. And overall just wasn't working. It just wasn't working. So what do you do when empathy and compassionate parenting just doesn't seem to be cutting it, right? I felt their frustration and I think I probably was them at some point. And then we started talking about some of the old school methods, right? And I explained to them and I said, here's the thing. I said, Throwing away all of the old school methods is sort of like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So what I want to invite you guys to do is to bring some of those old school pack leadership methods, right? Assertive leadership back into the mix and to do it in this new AG way. So that there was something about like when in, in the olden days, like, Kids knew, like, you know, people say all the time, I never would have talked to my parents like that. And even though back then parents thought they needed to instill fear to get their kids to know, you know, I'll take this belt out. <laughs> or, um, you know, there was, there, was a, there was a heavy dose of fear to get kids to, to do the right thing. But the bottom line is, is that parents showed up in this really assertive team leader type of way, pack leader, that's what I call it. And I say our kids are begging for that assertive leadership. There's a better way to do it than the way it used to be done. But sending our kids that message that we're not all equals here, right? We are clearly the parents and you guys are clearly the kids. And at the end of the day, we always get veto power. We're the parents. Now, that's not the same thing as smacking the crap out of your kids because you think you have the right to smack them. I mean, honestly, like I, that's, you know, I say it all the time. We don't own our kids. Owning people is called slavery. So smacking the crap out of your kids, I think is crossing the line. I do. I think it's crossing the line. However, firmly and assertively establishing the fact, no, we are not doing that. And, and you are the parent. At the end of the day, you get veto power on everything. And when we learn how to do it in a way where we're not physically assaulting anyone or verbally assaulting everyone, anyone, well, guess what? All those little pack members they end up understanding who is the parent, who truly ultimately is in more of a powerful position, and they also have respect for you because you didn't cross a line and violate their trust. You just firmly establish the fact that you can have a veto power. You can say, no, we're not doing that. And I don't have to give you an excuse right now or a reason right now. The answer is no. And we will talk about this later when we are all calm. 
that's what's going to happen here. That's the deal. And when we do it without losing our cool, without acting like a lunatic, without violating anyone's trust, our kids have respect for us. And they know that we are clearly the team leaders. So rather than case closed, get in your room, you set a hard boundary about taking your big feelings out of the common areas of the house. You know, this is, these are the things we learn how to do in mastermind parenting. Yes, you're absolutely allowed to have big feelings, but you will not harm other family members as a way of coping with those big feelings. And you absolutely will not hijack this household. So we can still send them to their rooms. We can absolutely establish that we have that power and authority to do so. And it's, it's the other members of the household are not safe when you're acting this way, period, end of story. We just don't have to do it in a way that absolutely tears our kids down and, and, and ruins their self-confidence. We don't have to do it. We, there's a better way to do it. So that PAC leadership and that power and authority of yesteryear it's not that we don't want to establish that same role in certain ways. We just know now there's a better, more effective, not damaging way to do so. So kids, especially kids with sensitive nervous systems, they want to be understood. They love empathic communication, right? So. Yes, this is how we speak to them in a way that lets them know we're on your team. We get you. We feel you. This is a way that we, we communicate with them where it's like we're, we're on, we are on the same team and they can actually hear us. And the PAC leadership assertiveness and structure piece helps them also equally to feel grounded and to feel safe in the world. Because any of these strong-willed kids that are doing the dictator dance, as I call it, right, this is a sign that your kid is desperate for you to take over as a pack leader and to reassure them that they get to just be the kid. The grown-ups are the team leaders. We've got this. They need us. So I know when it's like, this stuff isn't working, it's because you're missing the pack leadership piece. You don't know how to be assertive and to fully let them know, I'm the parent, you're the kid, I got this, I've got the ultimate veto power if I need to pull it out. I don't pull it out all the time. I wait for when it's absolutely necessary. I know how to speak like this, right? Like even the way I'm speaking in this episode, I'm really modeling what it looks like to be the firm, assertive, and loving direct pack leader. We're speaking like this. We're not saying okay on the end. There's no sing-songy voice. It's very clear who is the authority here. Uh, I really just wanted to model what it sounds like because I think especially for, for many of, of the females in the audience, this assertive voice, it does not come naturally to us, you guys. It doesn't. And so you may have even thought during this episode, if you've made it this far, that like, what is wrong with Randy? She sounds like she's pissed about something. And that's okay. That's okay. This is what I want to say. When we're speaking that way and we are clearly establishing our pack leadership when we need to, and we're pulling out that veto card when we need to, and we're not abusing it, and we're not reducing anyone to, you know, to, to, to shreds in terms of their self-worth. What happens is we don't ever feel like we're powerless. We don't ever feel like we have to go to that place of, of screaming our heads off to try and get heard or finally scaring them so that they're forced to listen. We don't ever have to go to that place. So when we just, the, the firmest we get is that strong assertive pack leadership that we have been talking to you guys in this episode. Don't, our kids aren't gonna think, they're, they don't think they're mean. I've questioned my kids about it. I'm like, do you guys ever think that I'm mean? Like, or do your friends ever think that I'm mean? And my daughter, she said to me recently, and, and my youngest son too, they're like, 
what are you talking about? No, it doesn't feel mean. It feels like, especially when a kid is acting or feeling out of control in their body, it's like, okay, mom and dad are here. They're clearly the ones in charge. They're going to protect me. They are establishing the rules. Like that dictator dance that your kids don't really want to be in charge. They really want to be reassured that you, you've got this and they get to just be a kid. So they're not going to think if you're, if you're worried about losing the mama popularity contest, this is what I want to say. This is, they're not going to think you're mean and terrible. What they feel like is mean and terrible is when you scream your head off at them because you've asked 27 times in a non-assertive voice and then you finally lose it because you're human and you yell. All They don't remember the 27 times that you asked really sweetly. All they remember is when when you went to the dark side. So when you handle it this way and train yourself to start speaking in this way, you don't go to the dark side. It's very rare that you go to the dark side. So do you see how that's so much better? It's just better. It, it, it makes your family run more smoothly. So if you're questioning the new aginess of all these techniques, I just want you to know it's pack leadership and it's em- empathetic communication. They, it's a marriage between the two. It's a dance. You have to have both on the scene for the recipe to fully work. And when you have both on the scene, just wait. I mean, I feel like I'm giving everyone keys to the happiness kingdom when you learn this approach because it's just better in every way. It feels better for everyone. So that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope it was helpful. And uh, if you have any comments or questions or if I can support you in any way, please don't hesitate to reach out. Randy at randyrubenstein.com. Have a good one.